So moving on to some of the other news that we're probably going to get during E3 or that we think is going to happen yep. during E3. I, I want to start this off with Ubisoft just quickly. I think mm-hmm. we're going to see more Beyond Good and Evil 2. We have yep. to. I swear to goodness, if I do not, I'm going gr- I'm gonna cry that whole week. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry wow. that whole week. I want a release date. Wow. Yeah. For a lot. Or a release or a release window. You cry if you don't get a release date or uh, is it just I'll cry if I don't get a release window. It's been oh way boy. too long since they've talked about this game. We'll um since we've seen more about this game. I yep. remember seeing this 2018, man. It's been so long. It's been 82 it's been years. <laughs> it's been 82 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that we're going to get some Beyond Good and Evil 2. Obviously, we're seeing the teases for Rainbow Six Quarantine. Yep. We're going to mm-hmm. be getting some more information on that. And in that little realm of uh, news, I hope that they're going to finally, please, finally, Splinter Cell. Finally. Thank you. Yeah. Finally. Thank you. I, was just, I was just about to say, I think there, if there's one thing everybody on planet Earth is hoping <laughs> to see at this UB Forward, it is a reveal for a new Splinter Cell game. And I don't know, I, apparently there's also rumors about like a new PvP game coming using no, like Splinter we're Cell. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like Ubisoft wants to make or it wants to put Sam Fisher in everything, everything. Yeah. that isn't a new Splinter Cell game. Honestly, so, I hope as, I hope as, they as, put those rumors out there to kind of I, I throw people say, off about that. I hope so. I hope. I, so. I will yeah. say, like game development, it takes time. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I think there's just no way a new Splinter Cell game isn't being worked on. But I guess just the hope is, like, is it finally ready to be unveiled? You know. Well, I, I think it, this also falls into like the Elder Scrolls thing. Is this, Elder Scrolls Six um, thing with like Bethesda, where just say it, just give us that uh, confirmation. Honestly, like all honestly. we need, yes or all no. we need is yes the sound. Or no. <laughs> yeah, all we need is the sound of the night vision goggles going up, yeah. the three green dots yeah. on a black screen. Yeah. That's it. Splinter Cell splash screen. You don't need to say anything else. But yeah, it, it's just the same old thing. Every single E3 is. Are they going to announce Splinter Cell? Oh, he's in a mobile game. Oh, he's in Rainbow Six <laughs> Siege now. Oh, yeah. he's an Easter egg in Assassin's Creed or Far Cry. It's like, come on. Honestly, just... that R6 one really hurt me because I was like, that was, that was rough. That's yeah. Yo, <laughs> that was throwing us in for a loop so they can't hurt us anymore. And of course, I think we're going to see some more Far Cry from them. Um, but honestly, yeah, I yeah. think I've seen enough Far Cry. I, I don't I need will... to see more. I will say about that, though, I have more faith in Ubisoft's press conference because they did their own direct for Far Cry 6. This mm-hmm. opens them up for the opportunity to really yes. take us by that's surprise. Very that's true. exciting. That's very, that's exciting. very true. And Do you guys think that they're going to surprise? Absolutely. I think so. They because have they to. Gave Far why, Cry would you, why would you have a Far Cry like exclusive stream? before e3 if you had nothing to show at e3 that's why i think they're gonna go heavy with this r6 update i'm hoping more on beyond good and evil 2 and then that tease that everybody's been waiting for splinter cell and then you know a little panda's showing up dancing just dance 2021 yeah (laughs) see i read that um that uh, presser for rainbow six or uh, far cry six as like we don't want this to leak out ahead of time mm, because okay. as we all know, E3 season, what happens? Ubisoft's games leak ahead. Yeah. And and that's why even you go online today and they already, you know, confirmed the, the new name of Rainbow Six uh, Extraction. They already talked about how Prince of Persia is not going to be there. It kind of just seems like they're they're setting expectations accordingly to be like, mm. OK, we're going to have this. We're not going to have that. They also have Riders Republic scheduled at some point for later this year i really think it's going to be a, a like a milk toast kind of year for ubisoft where they're just giving updates on games ra and development i feel like they're telling us that to throw surprises crossing my fingers so. i hope i mean so. we're, we're it's skull and bones we we're want skull and surprises bones. yeah skull and bones whatever yeah, happened I, to that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i just don't know and if, if we're want... gonna get like surprises like this is a brand new game that's fair. Uh, brand new IP. I, like, I don't know. There's so, so many Ubisoft games in development right now. Can they even afford to put a new game out there? That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. What other studios or publishers do you think we're going to get some announcements for? Let me uh, let me chime in really quick yes. with Square yes. Enix. With Square Enix. They got Square Enix Presents on June 13th. And they're going to they, they confirmed they're going to give us an update on Marvel's Avengers 
uh, specifically with the Black Panther DLC. Um, and this is being titled an expansion. So this is meant to mm-hmm. potentially be like a big content drop for the game. Mm-hmm. And Eidos also has a big reveal. A lot of rumors been going on for the last couple of years that they're working on a Guardians game. I think now is the time that we're going to see a Guardians of the Galaxy game from Eidos Montreal reveal. Mm-hmm. I like it. Okay? I, I like it. it. I would love it. I like it. I just am not that confident in that. Really? Yeah, I'm just not that confident. Oh, man, I don't know. Guardians, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the guys who made Deus Ex. Like, I feel like. No, I'm confident in the game. I'm just not confident in terms of. Well, actually, it may make sense because on the heels of Marvel and mm. the rocky starts and kind of launch it had, maybe they're looking to pique people's interest more. Yeah. You know, so uh, having yeah. another Marvel IP with mm. that people don't expect come in that that makes sense so yeah maybe i'm on board with that because i'm gonna I, I just think go on like board with that it, it adds up idos being rumored to have been the one developing mm-hmm. this game yeah like it just it just adds up yeah and they are confirmed yeah. to show something they are they're yeah. confirmed to show something so, so so it does make sense it does make sense i'm gonna just with square I, i'm really hoping final fantasy remake seven remake part two oh, something we need it. something yeah. we need it it's been way too long i think we're definitely going to see intergrade intergrade i think that's called yeah. the update for it yep. um but yeah. they have to tell us when we're gonna see the next part of this game i think we're either gonna get a trailer with a release window um or they'll mention it's coming out this day without a trailer or yeah. this time without a trailer I think, yeah, because, yeah Intergrade comes out this week on yes. PlayStation 5. So I think, you, you know, coming up next week, giving us even just a short cinematic, I don't even, I think it's still too early to put a date on it, but just mm-hmm. saying, you know, if we're working on it. This is, you know, it's in existence, like we're putting it into uh, everyone's mind makes a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to say before, before we finish off too, Elden Ring. If that isn't shown from Bandai Namco, people will riot. Out of yeah. even more than Halo, I think people don't realize if, if Elden <laughs> Ring is not at E3, there is going to be issues. It's going to happen. I, without a doubt, I don't. I yeah. don't see there being a case where they don't uh, talk about it. Especially because like we had that potato footage come out months ago, and that was supposed to be like an internal thing that they were testing, like just to put together a trailer and everything. They're working on something to show us uh, that game. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, do yeah. we go ahead, Malik? Oh, I was just gonna, I was gonna say, just to throw it out here, just, a, just a random one for you guys. It was yeah. about that Harry Potter game that we saw some really janky footage yeah, of a WB. while ago. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think that's likely, really likely. Uh, I mean, I, I'm hoping for an update on Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad, but I think just. Considering I think DC they wait for right DC yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so too. I don't think we're going to get an update on either of those games. Although it'll be really cool. Also, the rumors of an Arkham game coming, right? So, uh, we're not getting any of that. Let's be real. We At very least, anything. I do. I do think that there's a possibility of seeing like a short Gotham Knights teaser, and then oh. saying, <laughs> and then saying, uh, "Stay tuned for more at DC Fandom." Yeah, maybe a release date. Or yeah. something like that. Well, yeah, like a, a bigger deep dive. Well, what else will Warner Brothers show? That's what I mean. It's either something to blood. do with, yeah, Back for Blood, and then maybe Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. Oh. I, the thing with Back for Blood, though, is I Not feel like Hogwarts that game Legacy. markets itself. Yes. I feel like Black, Back for Blood, you literally don't need to do anything except for they already gave the release date. Like, that mm-hmm. game is going to sell. Like, if they do anything, it's going to be a beta. But much as i hate to say this they don't even need to put a beta out for that game to sell like yes. people just want sure. it. that's true um masonator says if you check rock steady studio jobs they're hiring a lead writer specifically for the arkham universe for a game and it's definitely not suicide squad because that's too far along to bring in a lead writer now so i think Unless. the arkham series is getting reviewed um or renewed a reviewed Major. the Ar- the Arkham universe, or I guess renewed, maybe you meant, renewed. is getting uh, more titles. Suicide Squad might be setting up for the Arkham universe and future games with other popular DC heroes. That's interesting. Uh, I, think, I think that job posting is for Suicide Squad because there's been yeah. a lot of rumors that Suicide Squad is games as a service. So mm-hmm. if they want writers, they want them for the content, the DLC. Mm, okay. Yeah. Can they? 
and studios bring in new talent all the time. It doesn't, yes. even if it, if it is a role like lead uh, lead writer, that that doesn't mean that doesn't really go to show like how far a game is in development. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I don't. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say we don't know much about Suicide Squad, um, the game, but if they kind of deliver on some of those promises that Marvel was supposed to with the Avengers, you know, they come out with, you know, it's a game as a service. They are going to continually support it. They're constantly given, you know, content. They can do that with the community that they have. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Um, Um, Go ahead. Sorry. Another one I wanted to throw out was um, Resident Evil Village DLC and then an update for the RE verse multiplayer. I think that makes sense. Uh, Resident Evil 7 got a lot of DLC. Resident Evil Village has been selling a ton. So yep. why not add more content to that game? Are we going to finally yeah. see GTA 6? No. 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 I don't think so. No. I Unfortunately. Wish. I, really, I love that. You're going to see you're going to see Rockstar's logo and then it's going to be an announcement that GTA 5 is coming to the PS6. Yeah. <laughs> They're really getting ahead of it. Yeah, exactly. No, GTA 5 is coming on Xbox Game Pass to the Nintendo Switch. That's what Whoa. we're going to see um <laughs> with Rockstar. Imagine. We I, I, man, I feel like if GTA 6 is coming, they're going to do their whole own thing for that. Yeah. Um, we're, they're not going to yeah. tie that into E3 at all. They're going to give that the proper love it deserves because that fan yeah. is huge. Um, yeah, so they, they would only do that though, not not because they they don't have to worry about the spotlight for themselves. Only out of respect for not destroying everyone else mm-hmm. in E3. That's the only reason why they wouldn't do it. It's just out of respect. Sure. Yeah. That's true. Um, we're probably also going to see more Final Fantasy 16 mm-hmm. and yeah. and Walker. Ugh. And, and rumors of another <laughs> Final Fantasy game? Is yeah. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, right. So I think that's pretty... That pretty much covers... Like, I don't think we're going to get too many surprises with this E3. Oh, and maybe, yeah. I don't know, a Sonic 2 trailer for the movie. <laughs> you know, mm, let's yeah. just throw that in there, too. Sure. Why not? Uh, I also think, you know, we're seeing teasers for the Borderland movie. Yeah. Probably a trailer at that, or or some sort of like uh, big like cast uh, picture. See them in their costumes and all that. Uh, we're Maybe seeing those, not like, a silhouette. This time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, granted, those silhouettes do look pretty good. They like, do. In terms they of, like, do look the costumes. Really good. They look really. Because at first I was, I was surprised. like, wait, is this a game? Like, is this and, the yeah. game that this is from? And I'm like, dang, these are silhouettes. Holy uh, crap! I think, I think a big part of that is that Randy Pitchford, Gearbox are pretty heavily involved mm-hmm. with yeah. the movie creatively and that's where like i think a lot of the mortal kombat movie falters is that there was like a lack of involvement there mm-hmm. um but randy Pitchford's, like on set he's tweeting about it constantly so like he's super excited about it and that gives me a lot of hope to be yeah. honest yeah absolutely now with all of this um you know we talked about what we think we're going to see i think we've pretty much covered it was there anything else that you guys want to add i just want to throw out one uh it's unsubstantiated i don't know who would announce it who would do it whatever i don't really care i just want a simpsons hit and run remake (laughs) anyone could pick that up anyone could acquire the license just give it to me if anyone would do it it would be xbox and it would be on game pass oh uh, sure yeah just give it to me me. uh, yeah just give it to me just redo all the assets up res it to 4k i'm good with that Malik, do you have a dream uh, announcement for this E3? Well, why would you ask me that, man? <laughs> I, I want Elder Scrolls so bad. I know I'm not going to get it, which is fine. But, like, honestly, I've been on this kick of, like, space games, and Starfield is the one thing that I'm mostly looking forward to because that mm-hmm. feels like the most realistic mm-hmm. yet hopeful title. Like, that that's something that I can get excited about and know that I'm going to get something out of it. Everything sure. else is like, I don't even know if this is going to be shown. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, Elden Ring is going to be up there, but to be honest, I want to see Ubisoft and Square Enix really surprise people. I think that with the, I don't think that we have the big three overshadowing e3 this year like i know xbox and bethesda are huge but i think this is a good year for some of these smaller developers and studios to come out and shine and that's what i'm excited about i want to be surprised this year that's a really good point um i think it is a great 
opportunity for some of the other studios that usually get overshadowed by E3 to step up their game. Um, so we'll have to see if that happens. Yeah. Uh, Konami's yeah, not going to be Mass there, Effect so 4. I mean, yeah. I, I like. I think all the rumors that, or all the hopes and dreams every gamer has, like you know, the Silent Hill, the Splinter Cell. It's like we have, we know which studios are going to be at E3 this year, which aren't, and it's kind of narrowing it down. So if yeah. there's going to be a surprise, it should happen this year if you're a smaller studio. Uh, Caboose, what do you think is going to happen, uh, or what's your dream prediction? It, I mean, my dream prediction would, of course, be like spider-man 2 but that's playstation and that would be like through state of play so like i i don't think any of that's going to come true but we were talking about stuff throughout the show like master chief and smash or a guardians of the galaxy game or you know an elder uh, elder scrolls 6 like announcement of some kind like those are the kinds of things that i would hope to see to be like my dream announcement but i guess if we're talking dream announcements like we talked about that guardians of the galaxy game i i, I think that's a dream that's that's coming true i think people should expect that to happen i'd say the likelihood of it is like well, like 90% it's going to happen. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I think everybody right. knows my dream. Breath of the Wild 2. Just make it happen. <laughs> Breath of the Wild 2 or Twilight Princess um, Ooh, on okay. the Switch, please. please oh, my please. God. Twilight Princess needs to make a comeback. That is yeah, such a good game. It is such a good game. Uh, I just want more Zelda love. It feels like this year Nintendo hasn't been doing enough for the anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. So, please... Give Link the love that he deserves. Um, with all of that, you know, the presentation moving to online, this is really the year where it will validate if E3 is relevant right. or not. What are your, quickly, what are your takes about that? Steve? I don't know. I'm, part of me is like, yes, they'll always still be relevant because we need a place or a, just some sort of structure in terms of getting all these publishers together and to announce their games like in a week or something because last year was a disaster everyone was it was the wild west so yeah i think yes they do provide something i'm still not sure if it's something that's still needed though um mm. we'll see in like a week or so i mean we're already it, it, it depends it also depends on what else they can provide like Right now, they're opening up their media portals. People are posting their awful uh, avatars online. People are yeah. meeting those, but <laughs> yeah. um, I created my own. It's it's awful. It's terrible. So I, I do have to wonder how much I'm going to take away from this in terms of what the what E3 provided me as a as someone part of the media, mm -hmm. um, or if it's just okay. They they help streamline some events and some conferences. Is, if that's it, I would say no. They don't. They don't need to be around anymore. Like the ESA doesn't really have a place to be doing this anymore because all of these people have proven that they can do it themselves. All these publishers did it last year. They just did it in a chaotic way. Uh, I, I think, in my personal opinion, I think no way E three is like dead. I think uh, this yeah. year, especially when the Xbox showcase goes live, UB Forward, Square Enix presents all that stuff. People are going to be tuning in in droves. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be really excited. There's going to be some big announcements. It's just this is a time of year where like it's the summer. People are getting off school. Everyone's going on vacation. Everyone's like enjoying their time to like see this kind of stuff. And you're right, Steve. You're, like you were saying last year, it was like the Wild West. There were mm -hmm. reveals like sporadically throughout the year. And it just, yeah, it's cool. You can get excited any time of the year for something big to happen. But I think there's just so much more value and, and a lot. And so it's just a lot more fun when everything is happening in that one week span it's yeah. just non-stop constant excitement it, it to me saying like e3 is over would be similar to saying something like san diego comic-con is over and i don't yeah. think that's ever going to be the case hall h and the event that it is for san diego comic-con and like stuff that like marvel would do or warner brothers and all that that's just never going to go away that excitement is always going to be something that's available for people and something that people will always want so i think you know once 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 the pandemic kind of has calmed down, people get vaccinated, everyone can kind of go out and about and enjoy being normal again. You're going to start to see, you know, E3 make a comeback and, and all that. Because even even the year when PlayStation dropped out and, and wasn't there and everyone thought like, oh, this is the beginning of the end. Yeah. The the turnout in terms of like the amount of people that bought tickets and just the, the, the amount of people that showed up to the event was still sky high. It wasn't yeah. as big as the year before, but it wasn't off by that much. So I just think like E3 is an event is always going to be around emily in my opinion 
Yeah, and I mean, to go off of Caboose's argument, E3 is dead. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Caboose, I had to do it. <laughs> um, but no, like, I think, I, I don't think E3 is going to be dead in any capacity, but I think all of these events that, like, got Summer of Games, got the PlayStation State of Play, you got yep. EA Play, you had the Ubisoft Forward, like, we have Nintendo Directs. I think all of these events around E3 are killing it. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. E3's bread and butter was that live event and that experience. It's like Disneyland for gamers. Um, and, and a certain level of that charm goes away when it's online. Yeah. I, I think E3 needs, and you know ESA needs to focus on bringing that charm online instead of getting by until we're back in person. Bring that charm online. Do what BlizzCon does, yeah, and like right. really cater to that online portfolio that you're building. So that way, when people are back, like like in like in the conf or in the convention center it, there's still this other experience that yeah. gives you that same thrill that same feeling of like this is e3 because if we're being honest i don't have that feeling like you were saying caboose of like man it's summer we got e3 we got all these games like let's go it, it still feels like that okay we're gonna get stuff throughout the year a and honestly it it's really tiring to have to kind of plan around oh all these God. separate events that are happening outside <laughs> of e3 that should have just been at e3 so it's like this catch twenty two of like I want I want E3 to do well, but the people pulling out and putting on their own events are killing it. Yeah, yeah. I agree, Malik. I feel like, you know, E three what's special about being e at E three is that you're there at E three. Um it's just the excitement of being out on this the floor, the show floor and seeing all these games that you could get your hands on and in the long lineups talk to like-minded media members or now like-minded minded fans um, about your fandom for these games. And that's what makes E3 special. E e the ESA needs to find out where they want to shine. I feel like they're trying to do too much. They're trying to be on the business side. They're trying to be on the fan side. They're trying to be on the media side. So they're right. being pulled in all these directions. They need to focus on what they want to be. If it is that fan experience, have that fan experience. Maybe should have took a year or two until we could be back in person or figure out a hybrid that's proper for a virtual experience. Um, you know, I think now with all these other studios, like you said, Malik, um, pulling out and, or like even just doing things on top of their E3 presentation, it, yeah. E3 loses the lackluster of being this exclusive gaming event of the year where everything's gonna be announced. Now you have the Game Awards competing with that as well. So it, it's definitely not easy being the ESA and trying to figure all those things out, but I do feel like their rel relevancy really depends on how focused they are on the one or two things that they wanna focus on. And I also think that it is gonna depend on how Summer Game Fest continues yes in in a year like say next year when uh conventions start opening up again and we can all start going to these uh events does summer game fest still live on as a digital only event yeah. and in that case are is media and influencers and and just enthusiasts still going to go out to a convention hall or are they going to say well i could get similar announcements or something like that at Summer Game Fest from the comfort of my own home. Yeah. Like, it really depends. It's like, is I it going to come down to, sorry? I don't think that's the case because E3, even when it was an in-person event, was always available online. Like, all the big conferences were still streamed online. So the major yeah. news and all that stuff was available to anybody from the comfort of their home, right. like, since since the beginning. So of it's course. just, there's just, there's, there's still that, that magic, you know, that experience. Exactly. But I do wonder, it. like, will it ever get to a point where Jeff Keighley and Summer Game Fest start taking things away from E3, where it's like, okay, well, now Ubisoft is now a partner with Summer Game Fest and they're doing yeah. their thing online. Yeah. Are they even going to be at the convention hall anymore? I think what I think they should the do. The only way Jeff Keighley does that is if he finds a way to then start doing, like, a live event, an in-person sure. event. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, I feel like what the move is for that would make a better relationship between summer game fest and e3 and maybe a smart move for jeff is to officially partner with e3 for the long term as yeah. like the cool like culture experience of gaming 
Right. Um, yeah. You know, you get the games and the presentations at E3. Everyone has their business meetings behind closed doors. You get your hands on the games. But we're bringing like the, you know, not celebrities, but like the gaming celebrities, you know, yeah. to right. the gamers. Right. That culture of gaming. We'll yeah. have to see, though, how this all plays out, because um, I think this E3 is really going to. I don't want to say make or break it because I feel like as soon as we're back in person, E3 is going to announce that their doors are open and we're all going to be there again. But it will be a hurdle for the ESA to cross. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do it. And we'll be tuning in and next week bringing you guys updates on some of these shows. So I'm looking forward to that. In the meantime, what do you guys have on uh, going up on the website? If you go want to ahead. go first, or uh, yeah, I'll go first. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow my review for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart goes live on Squad State. So I'd really appreciate if you guys head over there, ten o'clock a.m. ET. Uh, check it out and uh, yeah, share it if you want. But yeah, it really mean a lot if you guys go and read it. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. That's all, I'll yeah. say. That's all I'll say. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Malik. Um, I've been playing a lot of Dying Light on stream with Dying Light 2 coming nice. out. Um, nice. I had to buy some new pants because that game is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, aside from that, though, uh, we get the Battlefield 6 or Battlefield 2042, if you've been paying attention to leaks. We get that announcement this week. I'm so excited for that. Um, I think that's something that I'm the most excited for outside of E3 itself, so I'll be writing articles on that. Nice. Hopefully we get a little bit of a preview, um, but yeah, other than that, just go read Steve's stuff o- over at the website. Sounds good, and remember yeah. you can catch Steve's article at articles at squatstate.com. Uh, Caboose, how about you? Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of big stuff coming this week, especially with E3. I'm going to be tuning into Square Enix Presents, hoping that that Guardians of the Galaxy game is revealed. At the very least, going to be talking and reacting to whatever updates we get for that Black Panther DLC. Um, and then besides that, yeah, just just getting hyped. Looking forward to Xbox's press conference. Looking forward to Summer Game Fest on June 10th. A lot of fun stuff happening in the next week that I'm just really looking forward to. And you can check out all you can check yeah. out all my shenanigans, all, all that stuff. YouTube.com slash caboose, twitch.tv slash caboose, and then Twitter and Instagram at caboose ek. Uh, we're all looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to definitely be tuning into the UB Forward because I need to see Beyond Good and Evil 2. <laughs> and then obviously the Nintendo Presser I'm really hyped for. Honestly, it's going to be an exciting time because I feel like I'm now as things are going back, I just want to. I want to feel like I'm a part of that community in person. And the closest thing to do that right now is nerding out online about games (laughs) that we're all excited about. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm probably going to be streaming my reactions on my Twitch. Um, This is Camco. So you could follow me there on Twitch as well as just on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff for everything else that I have going on, uh, which is a lot of exciting things. But in the meantime, you could follow Squad. Remember the website squadstate.com and Squad State on Twitter. Thank you guys so much for watching. We had such a good time. Um, and honestly, I cannot wait till next week. So we'll catch you back here next Monday. See you guys later.